If you're like me and have 12 volt lead acid batteries or 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries like you see right here, you'll more than likely want to have on hand a reliable, high current output and inexpensive charger that can be used for both battery types. As you know, a 30 amp 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery charger can be quite expensive. In this video, I'll show you one that I found for only 25 bucks. Right here is the power supply unit or battery charger that I purchased on AliExpress.com. Just like my other videos, a link to this product has been placed in the video description area. When you purchase this unit, it is $25 shipped and it does not include the power supply cord or the wires going to the battery. It also does not include this push button on and off switch. It's designed to be connected up to your battery, then you plug it in and the charging will begin. If you want to have it turn on and off when it's connected to the battery, then all you have to do is add the switch in series with the power cord, and I'll show you in a minute. The power supply unit has a built-in cooling fan that will turn on when you plug it in or when you connect this to the battery. What I like about this unit, you can use it with 110 or 220 volts by simply changing the selector switch position. And right over here is a potentiometer. If you rotate it counterclockwise, you can adjust the voltage output lower. And if you rotate it clockwise, you can increase the voltage output. In a minute, we'll find out what the range is when I connect up my digital multimeter. On this side of the unit here is the model number, and you can see that right over here. A closer look at the terminal strip, you can see on the back wall, there's markings. So you have the power indicator light right here. And you can see right here is the potentiometer. It says clockwise to increase voltage. Over here it says voltage positive output. Over here is your voltage negative output. So it's all three screws right here is the positive. All three screws here is your negative. And over here it says AC input. You can see it says N for neutral. That's right here. Here's the symbol for ground. That's the green wire. And over here it says L for line. And that's my black wire. If you're going to be using this with a 120 volt supply, the cheapest way to do it is to find a very short, inexpensive extension cord. This one here I picked up at my local dollar store. The wires are 18 gauge. You do not want to go any smaller. I would suggest 16 to 18 gauge connected to the terminal strip. Once this is properly connected, you're going to make sure the switch on the side is set to 120 volts. You can do that by sliding the switch. If you're in the USA and you're going to be using this with a 240 volt supply, connect both hots to the far right. So line one, line two, and ground over here. What I did to add the switch is very simple. This switch has two wires coming out of it, comes around here. So I took the black wire, you can see right here, coming in from the AC receptacle, and it's soldered into the wire leading to the switch. The other wire from the switch comes back and then it goes to that first screw. So this just breaks the circuit, turning the unit on and off. You can use a rocker switch or you don't have to use any switch at all. Accessing the screws, just pop this up. Since this unit is designed to supply 30 amps, I chose a 10 gauge stranded copper wire. And you can see, what I did is I added this copper strip and it connects each one of these screws together. And the purpose of doing that is just in case the bottom of this terminal strip does not have all three screws soldered together with a very thick layer of solder, I'm going to distribute the current among the other screws. I did the same thing here as well. If you don't want to do this, take two number 12 wires, place one here, one there, so both of them are red, connect them in, and then you're going to take the two wires to where the ring connector is, and you're going to connect the ring connector onto two wires. Do the same thing over here with the black. Take two number 12 wires, and then you won't have to add the strip. When you insert the stranded copper wire, what you want to do is you don't want to bundle all the wire up and shove it to one side. You want to take that stranded wire, separate it into two groups that are equal, then you're going to push one group to one side of the screw and the other group to the opposite side of the screw. So both bundles are underneath the head of that screw. You could push the wire all the way in, when you tighten it down, it's going to be a very level connection. The head of the screw won't be angled, and you'll have very good contact with the plate underneath if you're using one. 
Because this is a switch mode power supply and the housing is made of aluminum, the weight is very light. There's no reason to have a voltage display on here, but if you wanted, you could pick up an inexpensive voltmeter that goes in a panel. They're only about a half of an inch thick. You can cut a hole right on here, put it in, connect it to the output, and you'll be able to see the voltage output. I really have no need for it. My lithium iron phosphate batteries are 100 amp, and when I drain them down fully, what I do is I just connect it up to this charger for about three and a half hours. At that point, I'll know it's fully charged. Now before I take this outside and connect it up to my lithium iron phosphate battery to show you how well it works, let me turn it on. You can see the battery voltage is set at 14.65. I try and keep it around 14.6 when charging my lithium iron phosphate batteries. So if I go over here by the potentiometer, we can get an idea of the voltage range for this unit. Let's go right here. Counterclockwise. Okay. 10.2 is the low end. Now let's see what the high end is. High end is 15. So this is actually perfect for charging lead acid batteries as well as lithium iron phosphate. So I'm going to lower this to 14.6. Okay, that's fine, 14.65. Let's take this outside and test it out. Right here you can see I have the power supply connected up to the HQST 12 volt 100 amp lithium iron phosphate battery that I showed you in a previous video. Right over here, it might be a little difficult to see. I'll give you a different camera angle. You're going to see how much current is going from the power supply into the battery. Here we go. And you can see right around 31 and a quarter amps. I'm going to let this sit for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then I'll give you some temperature readings from the power supply. Okay guys, it's been charging for 45 minutes. It was 30 amps up until two minutes ago, and then it dropped all the way down to a half of an amp because the battery is now at full charge. And right here you can see with the thermal imager, just before this drop below 30 amps, the temperature of the unit. And guys, I gotta say, it does work extremely well. If you're looking for something that's fairly inexpensive to charge your lead acid batteries as well as your lithium iron phosphate, definitely consider buying one of these. Thanks for watching.